okay so we have here merge sort algorithm so the way it works is uh, you're going to split the input array into two halves sort the subarrays and then merge the two sorted subarrays so for example you're given this input array uh, you could split it into two halves and uh, so that's 8 3 2 9 and 7 1 5 4 and then split it further 8 3 and 2 9 7 1 and 5 4 and split further 8 and 3 2 9 and so on so these individual elements are sorted by themselves so then compare these two uh, arrays um, so 8 compared to 3 3 is smaller so 3 gets in here and 8 gets in here then similarly 2 compared with 9 then 1 with 7 4 and 5 so now you want to merge these two sorted subarrays. So <coughs> you see here, this is the sorted subarray for this. This is the sorted subarray for this. So you want to merge these two sorted subarrays to sort the uh, this array. So we want to get the sorted version. Similarly, we want to these these two are the sorted versions of this. So we want to merge these two to kind of sort this. And then we want to merge these two to sort the original array, which is this. Okay. So, um, so the way we sort this is, so we have a pointer here on three and then two so three is greater than two so two is smaller so two comes here the pointer is still at three but here it has moved to nine so three and nine three is greater less than nine so three comes here eight and nine eight is less than nine so then nine is the only thing left or you can have it here similarly one compared with four one is smaller then seven compared with four four is smaller so seven compared with five five is smaller than seven comes here so then come uh, merging these two two compared with one one is smaller then two compared with four two is smaller so move here so three compared with four three is smaller then eight compared with four four is smaller then move to five eight compared with five five is smaller eight compared with seven seven is smaller so now we are done with this portion of the array we can write whatever is left over here. So the left over is 8 and 9. So I can write 8 and 9 here. So in general, we can have this recursion for insertion sort, to uh, sorry, for merge sort, to sort an array of n elements. We are splitting that into two subarrays, each of size n over 2. We are sorting both of them. And then we are doing some merging operation. The merging operation here uh, takes time uh, depending on the nature of the um, uh, number of comparisons so if you end up doing comparisons all the way to the end like for example if you want to merge these two uh, sorted subarrays say 1 3 5 and 7 uh, 1 3 5 and 7 and then you want to merge say 2 4 6 and 8 so you will compare 1 with 2, right, that's one comparison, and then um, 2 is smaller, so 3 with, three with 2, and then 3 with 4, and then um, 5 with 4, then um, 5 with 6, then uh, 7 with 6, so 6 is here, then 7 with 8, so we are done with this. So we need n minus 1 comparisons, right? Because the last element we don't need to compare with anything else, we can just write the 8. So to sort uh, an array and merge the two subarrays, right, you need n minus 1 comparisons at the worst case. Okay, now n minus 1 could be written as state of n, right? So it is state of n rise to d, d is 1, here a is 2 and b is 2. So b rise to 1, 2 rise to 1 is 2, so a is equal to b rise to d. So the uh, complexity is um, theta of n rise to d log n and d is 1, so n rise to 1 log n or n log n. So that's the best uh, 
so actually this is the worst case complexity of uh, merge sort but it's also the best possible time complexity for any sorting algorithm and log n any comparison based sorting algorithm cannot be done uh, less than n log n time okay so this is the worst case complexity of merge sort even the um, uh, the best case what will you do if you have something like um, this is the uh, best case so you compare 1 with 5 1 is smaller then compare 2 with 5 2 is smaller than 3 with 5 3 is smaller than 4 with 5 4 is smaller so the this half is written uh, as it is right without any uh, uh, element from this side coming in so we need only four comparisons here the rest we can just write as it is these elements right because uh, one subarray is completely uh, scanned and then you can write all of these things together so n over 2 is the best case number of comparisons whereas n minus 1 is the worst case number of comparisons but even n over 2 is state of n and you can solve like this okay now we can also uh, we notice that merge sort is said to be not in place so why it is not in place you see here it inputs an array and then copies that array the first half of the array to uh, a subarray b and copies the second half of the array to another subarray c so b and c are additional memory locations used by merge sort okay so because of this reason we say merge sort is actually not in place why because it takes memory uh, it requires addition memory that grows along with the input size so if your input is uh, 1 million elements to sort them using merge sort you would need 1 million elements uh, of uh, space to store the input array but not only that you are making copy of that array to two sub arrays right so uh, you need additional memory space uh, that is proportional to or actually equal to the size of the input array okay. of course the input array has to be stored but in addition to that you have to also store the um, uh, the two sub arrays okay now um, so because of this reason much sort is considered to be not in place which means it is memory uh, it's not memory efficient uh, so you can actually do a uh, comparison between insertion sort and merge sort with respect to space time trade-off okay. So I have done that in the question bank. So let me go ahead and pull it out Okay, so merge sort um, is n log n complexity there's insertion sort this is actually n square okay. and um, but the worst case complex space complex insertion sort doesn't require any additional space it is so it of one okay, so it should be n square let me correct it here and then I'll put it online I'll correct it so it should be n square okay uh, and then this worst case complexity as I said the complexity of merge sort grows with uh, the input size so the space complexity so the state of n okay so you should be able to compare merge sort and insertion sort as well as the time complexity and space complexity okay all right then um, Now to find the largest element, we can use a divide and conquer approach. So what we want to find is the first occurrence of um, the uh, largest element in the array, the index value. Okay. So if more than one uh, maximum element, or then if the same maximum element is occurring more than once in the array, then we want the leftmost index. Okay. Uh, so. <coughs> There's a pseudo code given in the question bank for that. Okay, so this is a pseudo code. So as you can see, what uh, what we are doing is we are um, finding the maximum index within the array, uh, the first half of the array, and storing it in temp one, 
and the second maximum uh, or, uh, and then the maximum in the second half of the array and storing it in temp2 these are the index values okay and we are then trying to compare the elements at temp1 and temp2 okay so if uh, the element at temp1 is greater than or equal to the element at temp2 right then temp1 is their greatest index so we repeat this recursively okay and uh, only if the element at temp1 is strictly less than the element at temp2 then we can say temp2 is uh, having is the index for the greater, uh, largest element okay so it should be strictly less than otherwise if the first index gets a preference so let's do this example So you break it into two halves. So you have eight, three, two, nine, seven, one, five, four. Again, break it as we did before. Now between eight and three, eight is greater, so the index is zero. So we want to essentially find the index of the largest element, right, within the subarray, which is zero here. Then two and nine, nine is greater, so it'll return three. Then seven and one, four is uh, sorry, seven is greater, so it return index four. Then um, five and four, seven is greater, so we return index. Um, so five and four, right? Um, six is uh, five is greater, so we return index six. Seven and one, four is greater index because seven is larger than one, right? So four is the greater index. So now we compare the elements at um, these index values. So eight and nine, nine is greater, so among these elements 9 is greater so we return the index corresponding to that similarly 7 and 5 7 is greater so we return the index corresponding to that which is 4 so now we essentially are comparing 3 and 4 uh, sorry the, in the elements at index 3 and 4 which are 9 and 7 so 9 and 7 are here so 9 is greater of course so 3 is the index of the largest element Now, if you see the well, analyze the complexity of this, the time case, uh, time analysis, time complexity analysis, um, the number of comparisons we are doing here is going to be the same thing as um, merge sort. Uh, the first divide part, which is two times c of n over two, because we are dividing into two subarrays and sorting, um, not sorting, we're finding the maximum of uh, element in each of them. But once you find the maximum element in the two subarrays, all you have to do is just do one comparison and find out which element is greater, and then return the corresponding index. So you'll need to do only one comparison for the merge part, but the divide part you'll have to do um, uh, just divide into uh, two sub problems and solve both of them. So if you do the ABD limits, uh, not limits, the L'Hopital's rule, I'm sorry, not L'Hopital's rule, ABD, the master theorem. So A is 2, B is 2, and uh, D is uh, 0. So B rise to D, 2 rise to 0 is 1. So obviously A is greater than B rise to D. So the um, uh, the um, overall uh, time complexity for number of comparisons, so the worst case is theta of um, uh, a is greater than b raised to d, so that of n rise to log a to the base b, but a is 2 and b is 2, so it's going to be log uh, 2 to the base 2, which is 1, so it is theta of n. So the um, uh, the uh, problem or the algorithm to find the maximum element in the array is still giving you a linear time, but uh, the implementation overhead is going to be too much. That's recursion. Okay, so now binary search. Um, so I'll give you the sorted array. You need to construct the um, binary search tree and then uh, use it to find the average number of um, uh, successful comparisons and the average number of unsuccessful comparisons. So, <coughs> Thank you. 
So um, the rule is to take the leftmost and rightmost index values and uh, divide that by two and take a floor of it, right? That's the, for the middle index. So to start with, the leftmost index is at zero, the rightmost index is at 12. So zero plus 12 over two is six. So the element at index six is a root of the binary search tree. And so this is 55. So now we want to go to the left of this Right, so the left index still remains at zero, but the right index uh, moves to phi, and we want to construct the binary search tree recursively for the left uh, part of the root. So it is zero plus phi over two, where phi because it's the right uh, index for the left uh, portion of the root. So zero plus phi over two is two. So twenty-seven is the uh, root here, and then. Um, we have 0 and 1 to the left, so um, 0 plus 1 over 2 is um, 0, so we'll have 3 as the left child, then uh, of course then 14 has to be the right child, uh, then um, um, the, to the right of 27, we have 31, 39, and 42. So 3 and 5 are the left and right indices. So 3 plus 5 over 2 is 4. So we'll put 39 uh, as the right child here. And then uh, to the left, we'll have 31, and to the right, we have 42. Similarly, here to the right of 55, you have all these elements. So 7 plus 12 over 2 is going to be 9. So we'll put 81 as the uh, root of the... Uh, not root as the child of the root the right child and then you have 7 and 8 in indices so 7 plus 8 or 2 is 7 so 70 is the left child and uh, 74 is going to be um, uh, the right child of 70 and then because binary search tree we need to know this property that the root is going to be always um, greater than or equal to its left children and it's going to be less than or equal to its right children and this rule is applied recursively so for anywhere in the tree uh, if you are like an intermediate node uh, your left tree children have to have um, um, value which is less than or equal to the uh, intermediate nodes value and the right tree children have to have a value that is greater than or equal to the intermediate nodes value okay similarly to the right of 81 you have these three guys so 11 uh, indexes the roots of 93 to the left you have 85 and to the right you have 98 so if you look at this the number of comparisons incurred for key uh, 55 is 1 for 27 and 81 it is 2 for um, 3, 39, 70, and 93, it is 3, and then for 14, 31, 42, and all the rest is 6 comparisons. So, no, 4 comparisons, right? For these, uh, these four, 6 guys, 14, 31, 42, 74, 85, 98, we need 4 comparisons. So, the average number of comparisons is. <coughs> For the root, there's only one comparison. So 1 times 1 plus uh, how many are there? Uh, 2 here. So 2 times 2 plus 4 times 3 plus 6 times 4. If you add all of them and divide by 13, which is the number of keys that are out there, you will get the average number of comparisons. Now for the unsuccessful comparisons, we need to be able to draw the um, uh, right out the range. Uh, of the different possible key values so there could be something which is less than um, 3 is possible and so everyone to um, so here uh, less than 3 uh, you'll need 1 2 3 comparisons and then uh, between 3 and 14 it should be here you'll have four comparisons then between 14 and 27 you need to have again four right because you need to search for 55 let's say you're searching for uh, 17 
so 17 is less than 55 go to here 27 less than 55 um, right go to 3 uh, 3 is of course less than 17 so it sends it um, to the right 14 and 14 doesn't have any right children or left children so it has to say uh, it is, the element is not there so the number of comparisons you need is 1 at 55, 1 at 27, 1 at 3 and 1 at 14 so it's 4 comparisons likewise for anything between 14 and 27 anything between um, 27 and 31 or anything between 31 and 42 any any comparisons so for the um, bottom guys you have unsuccessful comparisons um, to the left and right of yourself okay so here 14 31 42 uh, if you want to search for uh, 10 as I said you come here then go to the left and go to the left and then go to the right and see if it has any children if it has any children then you can see the element is not there if that is, is there if that is equal to that elements value so we do four comparisons uh, if you go all the way down and three comparisons for two scenarios when something is less than two or less than three basically we can have that similarly less than 27 so less than 70 less than 70 we can have um, uh, some element and we can find out that by three comparisons. That's what I show here. Between 55 and 70, you can have any elements, and uh, you can find it out using three comparisons. So the average number of comparisons is you add up all these numbers basically and divide by 14, the number of possible ranges that you have. So we have only two ranges that require three comparisons, the others require four comparisons. So it is four times 12, but only 14 uh, ranges. So four times 12 plus three times two or 14. And um, we'll stop here.